it's really about trying and making sure that you see the bird, bite it, and taste it. Well, Some kept it. <laughs> she kept it. Why am I? I think she's like. I think it's established. Like all the birds know that you're kind of like the one that feeds them. Provider. The provider. Yes, George, you're the provider. My fellow snippers and flighters, my name is Marlene McCohen and this is Jersey and we want to <coughs> welcome you to our channel. That's Rocky. <coughs> and he also kind of wants to welcome you, but he kind of wants to <coughs> let you know what he's mad at. Now before we go on, I just want to let you know what it is that we do here. We love birds. I am the creator of Engage Not Cage, that's my hashtag, and I actively promote it, which means that there are birds in cages everywhere, all around the United States, all around countries, locked up that people have forgotten about them. People think it's okay to leave birds locked up in cages. Should your bird have a cage? Yeah, as like a bedroom, but should your bird be locked up in there forever and not engaged with? Absolutely not. So my whole channel is showing you how to have fun, engage with your parrots. You'll see they're very happy birds here. And we also have a lot of educational conversations on this channel, even when we're having fun. Rocky, Rocky, do you wanna say proud bird? Proud bird, Rocky. So today, we are going to be focused on Isis, who I actually call Blue. I didn't change her name, I just feel like Blue is a little easier to say here. So essentially her name is Blue Isis here, but Blue for short. So if you guys remember my first video with Blue, uh oh, Jersey's like, wait, wait, I wanna go, Jersey always does this. I'm wondering what's going on? So here's the thing, you need to come off of there, right? Good girl, you're such a good girl. Okay. Go sit up in your spot, Jersey. Go be queen. Yeah, she's the queen. If you guys remember my first official training video with Blue, Blue was very skittish. So if you guys haven't seen that, go back and take a look at it. We've had a few improvements with Blue, but I really wanted to show you what a timid, nervous bird can be like. Indian ringnecks are a very special case. Indian ringnecks have this bluffing period, which we talked about. I really recommend you guys go back and look at the last video. But I want to show you the little tiny bit of progress I've made with Blue. It's not really a lot, but I'm kind of happy to show you that because I want you to see how much time things can take. I've actually been refraining from interacting with Blue until I can get the camera on. But Blue is outside all the time, like totally hanging out on this this stand. I just want all my interactions with Blue for you to see. So Merlin's very interested in this. You remember when Blue was totally scared of my hand. Now I have this camera, so that makes things a little bit difficult. Let me just see if I could place it right here. So Blue has since been moved downstairs. So here's some things that I've been doing with Blue, and I just want you to understand bird mentality. Birds don't want to be caged up, hence engage not cage. Leah is very excited about life right now. One thing that has happened is that she has begun to understand that my hand is a way out of the cage. So how did I do that? Well, she realizes that my hand is transportation and that's what she's using me as right now. And I'm fine with that because the more she gets used to that, then one day she's just gonna step on me. You saw how far Blue came with me on the couch that day. It takes consistent, consistent conditioning for the bird to start understanding that first of all your transportation so even if you feel like oh my god this bird only likes me to get him out of the cage and take him somewhere else that's a positive okay you are making a step the bird is getting comfortable with using you as transportation now blue will actually jump onto my arm but want to be anywhere else but on my arm. And I love wearing long sleeve shirts when I'm working with Blue because Blue has grip. So in all of her fear, she could just kind of stand there. So watch what I mean. She almost doesn't want to come out, but she does. You can see that she knows that I am her way out. How do you get your bird to understand that you are the way out so that at least you have that first step? You let the bird spend a lot of time out of the cage. There is no way that that blue sitting 
hanging on a tree with toys and food, there's no way she's gonna enjoy the cage more. This is not fun. So comparatively, birds are smart. All animals are smart. She's gonna realize I have to get on this arm to get to that spot. Here's the good thing about blue waiting. Blue knows that when I come over, this is her chance to get out. So now she's getting anxious to get out, which means it's gonna be a lot easier. Another important mental thing that you might wanna know about birds if you have more than one bird is that let's say I have Merlin out and I have all of the birds out and Blue is for whatever reason locked up. I haven't gotten Blue out yet. Blue will realize that she's the only one not included in the flock and she'll want to be included and she will start screaming. That's a good opportunity to take advantage of the bird's want. Here's another opportunity before we get Blue out for me to show you something. Merlin's obviously hanging off Blue's cage. I don't want Merlin on Blue's cage. So remember, Merlin is very territorial over cage tops. He'll let me pull him out of the cage, but getting him from on top of his cage can be very difficult. He could aim to bite. Another reason you would want to get him used to understanding being transferred. So here's Blue. Blue, come on. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. There you go. Okay. Now, what you can do, she's going to climb up onto my head. What you can do, oh, she left. She's outside of the cage. If you have a really good, I prefer like flat top cages where you could put a lot of toys and stuff, but this is just what I had here. Obviously Merlin's kind of interested in this whole situation. I don't know if Merlin's aggressive towards other birds, so I'm gonna move. Okay, well Blue stood her ground. Impressive. I bet that's gonna make Merlin go back to where he came from. <laughs> I think Merlin thought he could get territorial and it's not gonna work for him. These birds are survivors, guys, just so you know. All right, Blue, come here. Blue feels very comfortable up on my head because she feels like she's on top of me, she's in control. You never want to tame or train a bird when they're on top of you. Okay, Blue's obsessed with this tree, so this is where Blue is gonna sit today. She was having trouble and I gave her my hand as a perch, which is another trick that you can do when your hand becomes like the best thing closest to them to save themselves, then they start putting trust in your hand as well. So that's just something to know. So Blue loves to be on this tree and I'm just gonna let her sit there and be there so she understands that I'm not trying to control her or chase her or make her feel uncomfortable. I want her to go where she wants to go. So if she feels comfortable over there, then that's a positive. So if she's experiencing that as a positive, then she will feel like my hand took her over there and that's positive for her, if you understand what I mean. If I go back now and I try to hold her and grab her, then I'm turning her coming out of the cage onto my hand into a negative. I need to build her trust. I need to make her feel safe with my ultimate decision. So the main thing I wanna get across here is like your birds don't have to love you for you to let them be free. I really think every household should have bird stands everywhere where the birds can be out or at least cage play tops where they have toys and things for you guys to put there. Now, let's say it's time to eat. So in a little bit, I'm gonna be making these guys some dinner, George's, and then we're gonna give them some food, right? So I'll invite Blue to come eat with us, but if she doesn't wanna eat with us, that doesn't mean I'm not gonna feed her or give her anything special. That means that I'm going to put it in the bowl that's right here. Okay, so there's a bowl here. Okay. She, <laughs> she hopped over. Yay! Oh, she ate a little. She ate a little. 
So that's really good because we're establishing hand trust. So once she understands that, even if she dropped the cracker, like let's say she doesn't like it, that's not what she wants to eat, then maybe we give her an apple. Maybe that is what she wants to eat. She actually likes apples, she likes mango. So here's the thing with birds. They get something in their mouth and their beak is kind of like their third hand, okay? So they took it from you and then no matter what, they kind of like bite it. If they didn't drop it right away, then they bite it. Then you need that taste for them to go, oh wait, wait, they gave me food. And then after a lot of times of that, it'll work to your advantage. So you saw that all the times that George gave Blue the cracker, Blue dropped it, but every time Blue held the cracker more and more. With birds, it's very important to not give up. So what that means is you can't give the bird a cracker, offer it a cracker, a fruit or something, and then when the bird drops it, go, oh well, she doesn't like fruits, she doesn't like vegetables. That's a major part of the problem that people have is they don't continue to try. So a lot of people write me and say, my bird doesn't like vegetables or my bird won't take this or that. A lot of the times it's really about trying and making sure that you see the bird, bite it and taste it. Some. She kept it? Why am I, I think she's like, I think it's established. Like all the birds know that you're kind of like the one that feeds them. You're the provider? The provi yes, George, you're the provider. Is she holding it now? I can't see you. She is. I can't get too close. Cause Hold it. Yeah, good job, Blue. Okay. You really want to make sure that they had that chance to bite it and see if they swallow it. It's very important to really analyze your bird, okay? Sometimes if you offer them something too many times, they're going to like be so mad that they bite it. And then that's the moment that they realize they like it. I'm not kidding you, Rocky's like this. He's such a brat. Sometimes he's like so rude because I offered him something that he thinks he doesn't like. And then in the last time he gets like a hold of it or like the juice of it squirts in his mouth and he's like, oh. Here he is right now. Eating his stuff. Oh look, she obviously ate some because she totally just scratched her beak against the wood. That's how birds kind of like clean themselves and she also hopped over here. Wow, good job, George. Okay, so she dropped it. That could also be because my camera came closer and she doesn't trust it. So you have to say to yourself, why did the bird drop it? Did my hands move too fast around the bird? Did, in my case, did the camera come in closer? You have to really analyze what it is. Maybe the bird feels more comfortable with George and prefers if I'm not around. I have to consider that, but I'm just giving you guys all the options because she's taking food from George and then when I'm looking, she's dropping it. So I'm gonna give her a little bit of a break. She probably doesn't like the camera. Oh, this is another important thing. You see how George just fed Jersey? Birds are all about flock mentality. So what that means is that Blue sees that George gave Jersey food. So Blue understands now that if she wants food, she's gonna have to get it from George. So that was a fail, but that doesn't mean you give up. That just basically means you try again later. So now she's gonna see George is going over to Merlin. Let's see about Merlin. Merlin doesn't seem to like crackers when I give them to him. Stop, you're telling me he's eating crackers when you give them to him? Well, you got him off a cage, very good. Merlin! Yeah, he's been calling himself all day. Merlin! Now this is a good opportunity for Blue to realize that somebody else is getting the reward. So Merlin stepped up and Merlin's getting food. Guys, another thing we discovered about Merlin, so weird, first of all, we call Merlin the Explorer. Like he's on here two days and we already know like Merlin the Explorer. Second of all, he also likes the same side of the kitchen as Cody, okay? So I reinstated the tent over here and they both completely guard this side of the kitchen. So weird that they both are obsessed with the kitchen. Like it's weird. On a different note though, George told me that when my bird George died, cause I wasn't there, he died in a, like he was sitting in a box cause he came home from the vet and he was on the kitchen counter, right? I had a seizure in the kitchen. Yeah, just kind of funny that these two both are the same in guarding this kitchen. And it's also strange that both of them took to both of us. So like Cody loves me, George and Jenna, like just like George did. 
And Merlin likes George and me, and I thought Merlin would only like me, but he really likes George. And Rocky's playing. Wow, Rocky, I'm so happy about this beautiful mess you're making. Paper mache. Yeah, you're such an artiste. Look who decided to grace us with his presence. Daddy didn't see Mighty because you were hiding. Did you like that? Look, he asked you to come back. You're my baby. Are you my baby? Yeah, he's playing with mommy's hair. Cause he's... What are you doing, Leo? What are you doing? Huh? If you watched me on Instagram, you saw the most amazing video of all time. When I came home, Jersey was dancing up a storm. Some of the best dancing I ever seen her do. So after Alexa played that song, her favorite song, Perfect 10, which Randy Raj introduced us to, I'm standing right here with Cody. Now keep in mind the Alexa's behind me and I hear it turn on. She obviously can't talk to it. And I turn around, she ran up to it and pressed the on button because the song was over and she wanted it to play again. Oh yeah, Vinny, you want what song? Play that song? You like that song? Okay guys, so it takes me about an hour and a half to get them all ready for bed. Not even in bed, but ready for bed. So they're all kind of around the house in like lethargic mode. But I want to tell you guys something funny. I went over to Merlin's cage to do his water and his food. And he had two waters over there. One was pink and I go, George? Why does Merlin have two waters? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, he has two waters. I gave him two waters. I'm like, uh-huh, and why is one pink? And he's like, oh, because I, I made him tea. <laughs> Okay, very important guys, decaf tea. You cannot give a birds caffeine. Their hearts are so small and caffeine makes their heart beat really fast and they can have heart attacks. Imagine how tiny their little heart is. But certain teas can actually be really good for birds like raspberry tea, for example. Hold on one second, I got a visitor. I'm here, you were climbing on my leg. It's handsome. So raspberry tea, sometimes people give it to female birds that are egg bound. It really helps with the calcium. So if you want to experiment with teas for your birds, you totally can. Again, it's not just that they have to be decaffeinated. You kind of want to make sure they're organic. Did you guys hear Jersey screaming? That's like the screen of exhaustion. She's literally tired. You you don't want to be tired because you don't know. So sometimes you're gonna have to learn to decipher between their screams, their tantrums, all that. And Jersey has FOMO. She doesn't like to go to bed. Okay, so she's gonna try to do whatever she can to not get in there. But they're just like kids. You have to realize that they need certain things even if they don't realize it. I know, baby. So I always tell Jersey before she goes to bed that beautiful birds need sleep. Beautiful birds like her. Yeah, look at her trying her hardest. Come on. All the beautiful birds in the world, they go to sleep too. Yeah, I know. Okay, guys, look. Hey, she says. She doesn't want to go to bed either. She's such a good girl. Look at how she blinks. Who's a little actress? Oh, you look so good. She blinks like a little Hollywood starlet she is. One of my tricks when they don't step up, I just kind of slide my finger straight through like a perch. He's gonna be mad, he has to go to bed. Do you have to go to bed? Do you wanna go to bed? No. <laughs> So that is it guys, that's been our night time here. I hope you guys enjoyed this evening slash training. Sometimes I can't lead where it's gonna go, the birds have to lead me, and I hope you found it very interesting. Remember, if you guys are enjoying these videos, wanna help me get them out on time and support the cause of Engage Not Cage, become one of my flighters and join my Patreon. If you guys want any shout outs, check out my Cameo, it's a lot of fun. Forget about checking out Cameo for me, just check it out to like watch stars from your childhood like say hello to people it's, 
is crazy. Sometimes at two in the morning, I'm in my bed going, oh my God. Anyway, I'd like to give some shout outs to Starice Lee, to Casey Reese Johnson, to Shiva. I love you guys. Okay, I gotta get them all officially to bed. Oh, don't forget to subscribe if you love birds, but only if you love birds, not you can subscribe no matter what. Bye.